Welcome back to the channel, everybody. So, today's video, we're gonna be talking about this thing right here. This is the, the carpet wheel that I designed and built myself, and uh, that's what today's video is gonna be about. We're talking about this thing, why it's a good useful tool, how you can make one yourself. I'm gonna show you everything, <laughs> everything there is to see about it. And uh, overall, I think it's a great addition to the shop. You know, um, it's very quiet and it serves its purpose. You can turn... Really basic. Really, really basic. So, without further ado, let's talk about this thing a little bit. One thing that I try to do here on this channel is not inject my opinion where it's not called for. But I'm going to do that right now. It is my opinion that a lot of lapidary equipment is very expensive, um, you know, and it's getting more and more expensive as time progresses. It's not getting cheaper, and uh, people's wages aren't necessarily keeping up with these, uh, the rate at which stuff is going up in price. So if you have the means and skills and time and all of that stuff to make your own equipment, you absolutely can. Um, you know, we, uh, we as a society, us, hu humanity, We've mastered the art of making a thing turn. And that's essentially all lapidary equipment, all right? For the most part, all lapidary equipment, your rock tumblers, your cab machines, your saws, your polishers, your whatever, it's a thing spinning. So it's not that hard. Um, and that's essentially what this is, it's just a spinning thing. And we're gonna do a full teardown of this. Now, I gotta give a special thanks to my friend, Frank. Frank produced a beautiful, beautiful blueprint of this machine that's up on the website along with the article for this. You can go download it, use it, modify it. This is an open source project, okay? Um, I want people to have lapidary equipment and uh, yeah, and the easiest way to do that sometimes is make it yourself, okay? Uh, so go check that out. I'll run some pictures up here. It's beautifully done with everything that you need all right in this. It's a six-page PDF file. Go print it out. And uh, with that said, you can uh, follow along if you, if you want. All right. So, um, yeah, let's dive right into this. We'll get this thing broken down here. Um, very basic machine, okay? So it's pretty simple in that we have a wheel here that is being turned by a motor and we have a housing for it everything's just kind of mounted up doesn't get much more simple than that everything comes off with just a couple of allen keys we can take the whole thing apart we'll do that real quick here uh, these uh segmented belts you don't necessarily need these I like these because I do a lot of machine design and it makes it easy. Pulley. I'm going to put links to everything that I can for you. Uh, the carpet wheel simply held on with some set screws. So now you can kind of see just how basic it is. A couple of pillow blocks. We've got our motor here, wired up. Very simple stuff. Doesn't get much more basic than this, right? That's just a little uh, maker's plate. I always loved how on old machines, uh, you have this like beautiful brass plate and stuff. Well, I made my own out of, <laughs> out of aluminum. So you can see here, uh, this is just kind of designed to trap some of the some of the mess, you know, from the cerium oxide, which you'll be putting on here. So uh, the wheel. Now I'm not going to fully disassemble the wheel, but let's look at this. I think it's a pretty smart smart design. So right here is a quarter inch steel plate that I bought on eBay. This is an H pulley adapter. 
And on that, we have our drive shaft here, which is a three quarter inch um, fully keyed shaft, also purchased on eBay. Now here comes the difficult part, right? I did weld this, right? We have some welds here, okay? You do not need to have a welder to do this. Um, we do have some through holes here. You could very easily line up the holes in this with the plate, drill through, tap these holes, run a bolt in, and have it secured in that way. We're talking about a really slow machine here, right? This is a, you know, we're in the neighborhood of 200-ish RPM, 220 RPM. The carpet is being held on with a spring, okay? This is a spring made to assist in the closing of screen doors. And then I just bent up some copper and cut these tabs right here on the carpet. And you can see I have a piece of self-adhesive neoprene. And that just gives this a little squish, right? Just a little flex to it. Now, uh, one of the reasons I'm doing this with the carpet the way I am is so that in the future I can test other things like canvas as an example. Um, as you use the carpet, the spring stretches it in and it kind of holds it nice and tight on the wheel. So excellent way to uh, attach, the, attach the carpet to uh, your steel plate. Um, all of this woodworking here, I mean, it's not beautiful. We got some plywoods, different plywoods. The base is a couple of three quarter inch thick pieces that I laminated together. You can see down here, we have some holes down here at the bottom and that's what is being used to mount our motor and uh, to create the tension on the, the pulleys. Uh, you can just adjust this and pull your motor back. Um, everything's assembled using uh, stainless hardware, lock nuts, your yeah, uh, nylon locking hardware, and uh, pretty basic, pretty basic stuff. Um, if you have any questions, definitely drop comments down below. I think it's a project that anybody can handle, especially with the blueprints. All right, well, let's get this thing put back together. I'll show you the thing in action. So the reason I have this is to put a nice wet appearance on a rock. So uh, when I'm using my high speed sander as an example, I will take something up to like an 800 grit with a silicon carbide, or maybe you're doing up to a 3000 diamond grit and you wanna put that like super wet look on a rock and just have it nice and beautifully buffed out and polished so you can rock the rock in the light and it's just gorgeous. Uh, that's what this is for. Um, <laughs> that's what this does really, really well. Uh, I've done a lot of experimenting with how much pressure it takes. And when I push into this thing, the amount of pressure that it takes to polish your rock doesn't exceed the weight of it. So it's not clamped in any way. I mean, it just kind of sits on my bench. I mean, you could always put rubber feet on this. You could clamp it, all of those things. So uh, pretty basic setup. Um, I'm using just kind of your standard cerium oxide that I apply with a paintbrush. One of the big learning curves with this machine has been the amount of water that I put on it. Um, it requires very, very little. I just basically put a little spritz into my uh, cup here of cerium oxide. And I do like on a standard spray bottle, like half a spray onto the pad. So I'll go like that. That's probably plenty, okay? So I'll turn it on, we'll brush on some cerium oxide, and I'll show you what it looks like to, uh, well, buff out a rock. So I just paint my cerium oxide onto this thing. The outdoor carpet really kind of holds it really well. And we kind of even out that uh, water that was on there. Simply take the rock and press it in. Now, in my experience in doing this, it doesn't actually take that long. I mean, of course, it depends on the finish of the rock that you're applying. 
and uh, and that. And I will give it a look and see if it's streaking on there. And then I'll maybe do it a different direction. And that's all there is to it. You're just kind of standing here and holding, holding it. If at any point you kind of look at it and you're like, well, it doesn't really have the cerium oxide on it the same way it was when I started, I might add a little. I mean, cerium oxide is quite cheap. I bought a pound of it for almost nothing. I want to say 20 bucks. Maybe it was less than that, but you can get cerium oxide for very cheap and it'll last quite a long time. And you can always scrape out the dust out of your little tray at the bottom here. So when you're all done, you got to get the cerium oxide off of your rock. And uh, to do that, the easiest way is just with hot water and just dish soap. I will say that if you have cracks on your rock and you take them to this, you will get cerium oxide in there and it can be a pain to get out. So uh, I'm gonna go wash this off and we can talk more in depth about that process. So you have a lot of options, right, for getting that cerium oxide off of a rock if need be. Uh, if you have no cracks, well, there's no worries. But if you do have little fractures, you can see the, the wet shine on this. Um, a steam cleaner does a great job, a uh, little power washer, a textile gun, textile cleaner, that works. But overall, I mean, it's a very, very nice, uh, nice high buff polish that you get from the cerium oxide on the carpet wheel. I hope you enjoyed my presentation here on this carpet wheel. I hope you can maybe go look at the blueprints, build one yourself, on the website, if I get any photos of any of the ones that people have ever made, we'll put them all up there and we can all have this machine be our community uh, carpet wheel plans. Maybe there'll be a version two, three, who knows where it'll lead, but uh, I think it's a good design. It works really well and you can build it very affordably and it's within the grasp of anybody. I mean, Basic stuff, basic tools that most people will probably have sitting around. So, if you'd like to see more stuff like this, if you'd like me to tackle other machines, let me know down below, and uh, maybe we can make that happen in the future, you know? I just, I really want people to have access to good quality, affordable equipment. And more and more I'm seeing that maybe that's not the case for everyone. I mean, not everybody can just reach into their back pocket and dig out hundreds or thousands of dollars for these machines. So, uh, you know, back in the day, people made them, right? You know, like we look back at the world of lapidary going into the 50s, 60s, and 70s, a lot of people had homemade equipment. Make your own equipment. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for coming by, listening to what I have to say. Go check out those blueprints. <laughs> I'm very excited to see my creation rendered in, in on, on a piece of paper like that, you know? Thank you once again, Frank. All right, everyone. Y'all take care, and I will catch you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching my entire video. If you like what I'm doing here on the channel and you would like to support the work that I'm doing even further, you can do so by becoming a channel member down below by just hitting, hitting the join button. Doing so will give you access to a growing library of videos and posts, and it really goes a long way in supporting the channel. So thank you so much for coming by. I appreciate each and every one of you.